on the 29th day of October, Halloween gave to me 29 Sam's a stabbing, 28 Taters totting, 27 Baby Incubators, 26 Father's Eyes, 25 Nipples Biting, 24 Demons Moaning, 23 Head Skittering, 22 Detectives Thrilling, 21 Wiener Stretching, 20 Zombies Climbing, 19 Richards Cheesing, 18 Undead Trains, 17 Morticians Regaling, 16 Vincent's Cracking, 15 Lee's Counting, 14 Brides Abiding, 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 Fathers Stripping, 11 Au Pairs Drowning, 10 Children Creeping, 9 Roddy Seizing, 8 Snowy Mazes, 7 Bacons Digging, 6 Doorways Bending, 5 Children Yowling, 4 Zombie Bulls, 3 Haunted Mirrors, 2 Monster Houses, and a Fog that Makes It Hard to See. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the 29th uh, day of our 31 Days of Halloween celebration. October 29th is here already, and uh, I can hardly believe it. But, uh, you know, let's face facts. The, that's the day. Ain't no getting around that. Uh, and, and another thing that there is no getting around is uh, every Halloween, I'm going to watch today's film, which is, of course, uh, Michael Doherty's Trick or Treat the finest horror anthology maybe ever made, but we'll, let's talk about that. So, uh, this, uh, came out to some fanfare and, uh, was originally my understanding, at least I'll tell you the story I know about why this movie went straight to video because it was originally conceived as a theatrical film and, and conceived as a theatrical film that would go on to uh, have subsequent sequels every Halloween. Kind of taking the uh, the Carpenter idea uh, that he originally had with the original Halloween of, hey, what if you called it Halloween 2, 3, 4, 5, but every movie was different. It was just a story set around Halloween with spooky happenings. And that, of course, uh, got kibosh because Halloween made all the money. It, you know, f very famously, Halloween was the most successful independent film of all time for many, many years. Um, was it Blair Witch that unseated it? Maybe. Um, <laughs> but at any rate, so th th what I know of the, uh, the journey of the film was that Mike Doherty was working for, uh, is it Brian Singer? I want to say, um, who, who did all the, no, no, that's not right. Hang on. Um, yeah, it is Brian Singer. Okay. So he, uh, was one of Brian Singer's guys and did some work on, um, Superman returns. Well, Superman returns as you may or may not remember was a ginormous flop. And so what happened was, uh, both Brian Singer and Michael Doherty both got put in movie jail a little, a little bit. And for Michael Doherty, that meant that the movie that he was making at the time, which was trick or treat, you know, when Superman, uh, returns finally was released, he'd moved on and was starting, uh, his own film. And then it comes out, it's a bomb. The studio is like, you know what? Fuck you guys. You, you screwed us royally by doing a, a Superman movie that was unsatisfying. <laughs> unlike every other Superman movie that has ever been made. And so, uh, of course that's a lie. Um, and so Michael Doherty, uh, found himself in a position where the, the studio kind of canned the movie. Like they, they finished the film, but then they just put it on a shelf and it was a while before it was able to be released. And then it no longer had a theatrical release. It just made its way to, to video. But of course, when it did, it was insanely popular. Like that was the movie, uh, the year that came out, um, which was what, geez, uh, 2007. No, no, not at this point. Yeah. Jesus Christ. How the time flies. Uh, so 2007, when that movie came out, like people went bonkers for it. It's amazing that that movie is 13 years old to me. Holy shit. So, um, it, with the benefit of, of hindsight now, <laughs> 13 years on, um, 
it's it's strange to think that this has become like a Halloween institution because you know that very few movies ever achieve anything remotely like that. Uh, even you know Halloween is seems like the logical choice, and then what? Maybe the Friday the Thirteenth movies, that kind of thing. Um, but it, there wasn't a, like a, a, a real Halloween movie in the way that trick or treat is. And, you know, first of all, it's an anthology and I will say uh, right off the bat, I think all of the stories are totally fine. I don't think there's an exceptional story among them. I think the closest you get is the Dylan Baker story just cause it, it's really darkly funny, but everything else, eh, it's fine. I get it. Uh, nothing, nothing, uh, earth shattering or groundbreaking about any of the narratives of, of these stories. Um, but so what makes trick or treat a modern Halloween classic then Bo, you ask, and I'm like, Hey, you, how about you back off for a second? I'm just trying to do a show here. That's my kind of Crispin Glover from back to the future for no reason. I don't know what's going on today. Anyway. Um, I think the reason that it it's elevated isn't because of the narrative. It's not the stories, although the stories are fine. In fact, maybe because the stories are just kind of fine. They're just, they, they, they feel familiar in a way that all of Trick or Treat kind of feels familiar. Uh, and not just because I've seen it a million times, but because... From the first time you see it, this is a movie that clearly is in love with the concept of Halloween. Uh, the first time that you see Sam, um, and and like as the film goes on, and you realize that this is kind of the spirit of Halloween. It just fills your just you know your goth love and heart with warmth and and happiness, and it's one of those things that. I guess like people who watch uh, Frosty the Snowman and get all like warm and fuzzy about it and shit, th that must be what they're feeling. The feeling I have when I watch Trick or Treat is the feeling other people have when they watch, say, A Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, it is that feeling that uh, I am where I, I ought to be. I am I am among friends and and that this journey is going to be just delightful and wonderful and kind of scary at times but none of it is challenging it just all feels right and there's something to be said for getting a tone right in a movie and nailing it to a degree that everything else about the movie becomes much better um the, you know all the little stories like oh the twist there are werewolves you know, that kind of stuff is, you know, in a different film would be like, yeah, I saw that coming a mile. Nothing about this is surprising. Sure, sure. But the fact that it's happening to Marilyn Manson, and if you have ever listened to Duncan and I talk about Marilyn Manson being played in, in movies, we love it. And you do it with a werewolf fucking scene. Well, now we're getting somewhere. And the movie is filled with moments like that of like, you know what? None of this is, is revolutionary, but all the decisions are right. You know, it's, it's almost a, like a miracle of, uh, of, of like holiday filmmaking. Cause I don't know that there's another movie that so embraces Halloween as, as, uh, not just a holiday, but as, as sort of this, you know, a community, um, in, in much the same way that like we here at Legion are kind of a community. It, it's like, this is a movie made for people who get it. And if you get it, it's one of the best movies you ever saw. And if you don't get it, eh, that's fine. Maybe. But, and, and here's the other thing I, I will say about trick or treat is that it's one of the movies that crosses over with the normies. And, of course, by normies, I mean people who don't watch horror movies all the time. But you show this to them, and it maybe it feels a little fresher. But even that, I don't think fully explains it. I, I was talking to uh, power listener Andy, you may remember from the Shotcast episodes, uh, just the other day, about how he had just recently rewatched uh, Trick or Treat. 
and hadn't seen it in probably three or four years when I made him watch it one Halloween. And he really enjoyed it and went back to it and, and, you know, was just delighted all over again. And I think it's just such a, I I, I don't want to say good natured because it's kind of mean spirited, but mean spirited in the right ways. Again, I, I keep going back to this sort of vague notion of like all the decisions are just the right ones. You know, that it's it's kind of funny at times, but it's never too funny. And it's kind of scary at times, but it's never too scary and too brutal. It just rides this line of like, let's everyone have a great time. And at the end of it, you're going to feel like you just saw a new creep show. And that's kind of what, like Doherty totally sticks that landing. And... You know, I know that uh, Trick or Treat 2 is supposed to be on the way and they've done some comic series and things like that, but there's just never going to be anything quite like Trick or Treat. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say that Michael Doherty is incapable of making a film as good as this, but I don't think we should expect it and I don't necessarily know that I want it. You know, do something different that I might enjoy, but you know. I'm one of those people that thinks the drop off between Creep Show and Creep Show 2 is pretty substantial. So I don't care if Trick or Treat 2 is good or not. Uh, I'll always have Trick or Treat. And it will always be one of the best movies I've ever seen about Halloween and the stuff I love. Like, you know, it's it's got vampires and werewolves and zombies and slashers and imps. And, you know, it's just got everything. And it, it's such a glorious, like a ebu- ebullient, uh, uh, celebration and it feels good to be a part of it. And when, you know, people talk about trick or treat, um, they do so with this kind of joy. And, you know, we, we talked about it obviously on the best of the two thousands, um, recently on the podcast under the stairs and it didn't, it didn't make it. You know, it didn't make it on the final list, but, you know, because it's it's a movie that doesn't feel innately, like, important or groundbreaking or a milestone of cinema or anything like that. It just feels good. And, and I think that's probably why it didn't go through, is that there were other movies, particularly in that year, that was a rough year. Uh, but there were movies that year that that felt like it, we would be we would be wrong not to put this through. Um, and I stand by those decisions. But going back and watching Trick or Treat, it is it's just a joy, man. Every like the uh, from the way that the the pumpkins are lit, that one shot of of you know pumpkins glowing all over the lawn is one of the most beautiful beautiful shots in horror cinema ever. Um, it, it looks great. It moves like it's not 90 minutes long and you get, you know, three or four solid stories in that time, the interwoven time, uh, as you realize like, Oh, this scene is happening before that scene, that kind of, uh, Pulp Fiction esque, uh, sort of, of, of play with, uh, the editing. I think all that's real fun. Um, you know, on subsequent viewings, it, it's sort of less impressive, but that doesn't mean it's not a good time. Um, and yeah, it's just terrific, man. I, you know, it, it's one of those movies that every time I see it, uh, it, it feels a little more perfect. Like it, it, it just always has existed that trick or treat was somehow an inevitability of film. Um, that one of these days somebody was going to make the perfect Halloween movie and it just happened to be Michael Doherty. And, uh, and of course, special shout out to, uh, Sam, who is, uh, if you're going to have a Halloween mascot, boy, he's an awful good one. Uh, boy, that is real, real good. Okay. Enough about that. Uh, you've probably seen trick or treat before. If you never have do yourself a favor. Oh my goodness. Just sit back and enjoy. If you haven't seen it in a while, say a 10 years or so, because apparently that's a thing that could have happened at this point, uh, then by all means, you, you should check it out again. Um, it, it's a wonderful film. And if you want to let me know how you felt about uh, a, a subsequent viewing, you can drop me a line at bo, B-O at legionpodcasts.com. 
Uh, also, if you head over to the website, you can uh, connect with us there on uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And uh, I don't have the the Discord server up there any longer, uh, but I, I kind of want to get that started again. So uh, just because I happen to be on Discord a bunch for work, it's a good way to, to stay in touch. Uh, but at, at any rate, uh, drop me a line, Bo, B-O at legionpodcasts.com, uh, subject line Halloween or whatever the hell you want it to be. Uh, let me know what you've been watching, how you've been celebrating the season. Uh, if you've been enjoying listening to these, uh, because, uh, I have some ideas about how to kind of continue this, maybe not as a daily thing, but as, as a more regular thing, that's just for the Legion podcast feed, uh, that also would not be a, a an ordeal to do. Uh, which is, that makes a difference. So anyway, uh, look, have yourselves a great day. It is Thursday where the weekend is almost here. Halloween is almost here. So, uh, make sure even if you, you waited till now, you didn't put up decorations or nothing. You haven't watched a scary movie. Uh, you, that's fine. You can do it tonight. You can do it right now. Just, uh, uh, throw on, uh, uh, the, the scariest movie that, uh, comes to mind, maybe a trick or treat, just something to make you feel good. You throw on the comforter, watch the leaves fall outside and the, the gloomy gray skies remind you that, uh, there is inevitably the cycle of death and then life. So <laughs> at any rate, uh, thanks very much for listening. Uh, we'll be back, uh, on Friday for October 30th. Uh, the, the, one of the last two movies we're going to talk about this whole year of 2020, uh, for, for Halloween. So, um, come back then and, uh, and I'll see you then. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.